Good morning and welcome Eternity Church based here in Norwich in the UK and um, we're so glad you could join us this morning. Obviously remember we do meet in person at the church every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock plus various things that happen during the week as well. So check out the website, check out our, um, our various social media feeds as well. So let's just open with a word of prayer heavenly father as we get into your word right now we just pray that you will open up our our understanding lord god that you would help us to receive from you the revelation that you want us to receive today that lord jesus it'll impact our lives in some way and so we just surrender ourselves to you right now and we grant you this time so that we can focus on the things of you in jesus name amen so i wanted to talk today on the subject of living by design living by design that is my as my title um so many people are living by accident and falling from one situation to the next and from one occurrence to the next and not quite finding happiness in anything because the pursuit of happiness has become so central to our culture and the pursuit of happiness was never a god thing because happiness is a byproduct of our relationship with god and coming into um, a realization that we are complete in him and so when we come into that completeness with our relationship with god and we have the indwelling holy spirit um, the, the happiness is just sort of a it becomes a byproduct of that and the bible talks of joy and joy being our strength and joy being one of the the fruits of the spirit so we need to stop trying to be significant and start to try being uh, start being authentic people are trying to be significant all the time you see cultural influences on social media who really are just people that post a lot of things and actually for the most part are faking what they're doing and so they're trying to look influential they're trying to look like they're doing something good and very often setting a very poor example um, they, they tend to be painting a picture of, social, of, of a life on social media that is unattainable to most and quite frankly is not even being lived by them themselves. Um, social media influencers, and I found out something interesting, are, are actually renting the fuselage of an aeroplane that is located in Los Angeles in California. And you can actually, it's a fuselage, in other words, the, the inside of this aeroplane, the actual tube of the aeroplane, and you can hide, it stands in a warehouse. And I was looking at it, uh, pictures of it yesterday and a couple of articles about it. You can book it for a 15 minute slot, um, 24 hours a day. It's, op it's The bookings are running 24 hours a day. You book it for your 15 minute slot and you move in there with your um, the little cameras and everything like that. And you take photographs of yourself inside this jet and it looks like you're on a private jet. And they even provide blue sky and a video of clouds through the windows and so it looks like you're going somewhere and apparently it is co currently booked up constantly and it costs around 60 pounds now for a 15 minute slot where you can actually then take photographs and they go into this or pretend to be flying somewhere and they post it on um, TikTok or Instagram and so their followers think that they are just amazing because they post captions and I saw some of the captions like oh where should I land this time you know, off to Spain you know um, here I am flying off to Hong Kong and you know I wonder what adventures I'll have there meanwhile they're sitting in a fuselage in in a warehouse in Los Angeles and faking it <laughs> you see um, young people are encouraged to follow their dreams as long as their dream ties in with whatever is popular and woke at the time and all the time we lose our God-given identity because we were never designed to be following a trend and people are faking things to try and look like they're living up to a trend and when we do that we are losing ourselves in the process we're losing the spirit of ourselves and we're starting to blend into a society that says we need to blend in and we need to fit in and we need to be on trend with everything um, I just wish that getting right with God would become on trend and um, we were designed to arise to shine and to be a carrier of the love of God to a world that has lost sight of what love really is living by design happens when we surrender ourselves to God and we stop trying to, to fit into a mold we stop trying to be significant and we stop trying to lift out an image that we feel pleases God when we were never called to be popular we were never called to do any we were not called to be like that we were called to be the children of the king of kings we were chosen to serve and to humble and to to be humble and to die to selfish um, selfishness daily but still pursuing good careers and good gains but all of that to glorify god 
And when we do succeed, God is glorified because we're reflecting His excellence, we're reflecting His goodness, His standards, we, and also celebrating the talents that He has given us. There's nothing wrong with doing well. There's nothing wrong with having a huge amount of followers on, on social media. Nothing wrong with that. Um, the, what, what it comes down to is the motive. And if you're finding your, your, um, yourself, if you're finding your identity in things like that, um, I put it to you that we're on very, very dangerous territory. When we, God is always glorified when we're doing well because we are celebrating the talents that he's given us. You're not a haphazard occurrence, people. You were designed, you were created, and you are an object of God's love. And if we look at Psalm 139, reading from verse 7 to 17, now remember the, the, the Psalms were, they song lyrics. They're, they're not doctrine. They, they fit in with the doctrine, which is why they've been canonized in Scripture. But they're, they're poems. And look at this beautiful bit of writing here. Um, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. What a beautiful bit of creative writing right there. And it captures the essence that we are wonderfully made. You are God's masterpiece. His workmanship created for good things in Christ according to Ephesians 2 verse 10. Let's have a quick look at that. Ephesians 2 verse 10 in the New Testament it says, We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Why did he prepare them in advance for us? Because he knew you were coming. And he's already set up the success path. He's already set up what it is that you can do in this life to be extraordinary. And, and you are extraordinary just by simply being who you were created to be. You are a masterpiece according to scripture. Yet we try to cover the masterpiece with fakes. I was reading an article where it says that a Van Gogh painting was hidden under another lesser valued painting of his. <laughs> and they actually, they, they weren't able to recover it, but they could tell by using certain x-rays that they use in the art world that there was a painting behind it. And they were able to see enough of it for an artist to actually recreate what he believed was actually hidden there. And it turned out to be one of his hidden paintings that could have been worth a fortune. You see, we cover the value with what is not real and we lose our very selves sometimes. We're taking the masterpiece and we're painting something over it. And we're trying to become something that we quite simply are not. When we are modeling ourselves on human expectations, we lose our soul while we gain a world that is so temporary. Last year alone, 200,000 teenagers in the United States had plastic surgery and social media turns out was to blame for most of them as a generation sought to change what they looked like because someone else said you don't look right you need to do something with your nose you need to do something with your ears you need to remodel your jaw or something like that and when we do that sort of thing we're losing ourselves because we're living up to an identity that was not designed for us by God yes plastic surgery is a necessary thing in certain circumstances um, when there's some sort of an aberration that can be corrected but not because you just want to look you want to fit in with a trend you want to look better um, when you already look absolutely fine when God created you he said that your appearance was good everything he creates is good and we don't get to decide what beauty or handsomeness looks like we're created in the very image of God and he loves what he creates. When we become more centered around what we look like on the outside and less concerned about our condition on the inside, we step into very dangerous territory. You see, everything is looking beautiful on the outside, but on the inside it's, it's decaying. Jesus even looked at the Pharisees and he called them whitewashed tombs. He was saying everything's beautiful and pretty on the outside, but there's a rottenness on the inside that needs to be addressed. In the words of Samuel, when anointing David as king, he said, man looks at the exterior, but God looks at the heart. That's 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. When we step away from an image we're trying to live up to, a few things happen. 
Firstly, we start taking care of our soul. Soul care is so seldom practiced. We need greater teaching in schools on mental health issues, what they are and how to respond to the symptoms because all too often young people are saying, you know, I know of somebody that's really, really struggling and I'm trying to help them. And I'm thinking, but you're not equipped to help them. You yourself are a child. You should be living your childhood, living out your teenagehood, not trying to help somebody with mental health issues. You know, are we actually equipping people to know exactly what to do and what professionals, what professionals to plug that person into and to send them to? Too many people are ignoring their own mental health issues, but they would never ignore a physical health one. If you had a broken leg, you wouldn't ignore it and say, oh, well, you know, it's just a phase, you know, um, it'll, it'll be fine. Yet when our thoughts and our emotions and our well-being break, we don't seek help. I blame bad church teaching on this sometimes and we say, oh, it's a demon. You know, the person's depressed and it says send the demon out of them. And we're demonizing people and marginalizing people that are actually very broken and desperately need some help because our bodies are fragile and frail and they break and our mind, our brain is part of that. And sometimes it breaks. Um, so we've I've heard awful teachings where people are encouraged to oh, trust God and throw away your medication. Well, to me, that is criminally irresponsible. And I know of somebody who, who died as a direct result of somebody telling her to do just that. That's like taking someone with a crippling back problem and telling them to throw away your wheelchair and your crutches. That doesn't heal them. That just creates a massive problem. And yes, God has done it. God has healed people before, but let's wait for the miracle to manifest when you'll know when a miracle has happened. May we lose the negative, shameful stigma attached to mental health issues and be free to confess when things are not good and needing help. You're free to contact me here at Eternity Church. We start to reflect God's image and not our own is the second thing that happens. When we reflect God and not our own self-made image, we're becoming authentic and the masterpiece is coming out from under the lesser valued item. Only that which God has designed carries his signature of approval and God approves of you. He doesn't approve of everything you've done. He doesn't approve of all of your thoughts and all of your actions, but he approves of you. When we reflect God's image, we're carrying his light into dark places because light cannot help but shine. <laughs> it can't help but shine. You know, I've got various lights around me here to light up the set here. And they can't help but shine. There was no struggle when I switched these lights on. You know, they are lighting up the place and they, they don't confine themselves to something. They are lighting up everything around them. And when we carry the light of God in our lives, we light up the things around us. The third thing that happens is we lose our fear of man and we start to revere God. Being wrapped up in self-consciousness puts us at the mercy of the opinions of people who do not know you and who have no right to lock you up in their opinions of you. There are, there are people today right here who are in cages of opinion. People watching, you are in a cage of opinion because someone said what they thought of you and you've lived in that cage for years and Jesus wants to set you free from that today. To step out of the smallness of the words of others and into the greatness of the light of Jesus. The command is arise, shine. International speaker Paul Scanlon once said, you know yourself better than anyone else, yet you still crumble at the words of someone who hasn't even lived a second of your life. When I made Jesus the focus of all I do in my daily life, I, I lost my fear of man, and because the words of man carry no eternal life with them. And the last thing, we start taking up our rightful place when we're focusing on God and not our own image. Proverbs 30, reading from verse 24, um, fascinating verse this four things on earth are small yet they are extremely wise ants are creatures of little strength yet they store up their food in the summer hyraxes are creatures of little power they, they're rock rabbits yet they make their home in the crags locusts have no king yet they advance together in ranks a lizard can be caught with the hand yet is found in king's palaces what he's talking about there is these creatures mentioned, they've got no education, they have no training, they just find themselves where they are and doing what they do because they're doing what comes naturally. The lizard lives in a palace because he does what comes naturally. No effort, just moving ahead in a forward motion, putting one foot in front of the other. Study hard. Gain knowledge. Get into physical shape. Start a new business. Seek out business opportunities. Be a great employee, but be yourself. And like these various creatures mentioned in Proverbs, you suddenly find yourself being where you were always meant to be and there was no effort. 
You're just there because it's the natural thing. It just happened. That is who you are. Be yourself. You bear the fingerprint of God. Only the original bears the true signature of the author and you carry the signature of God. Be yourself. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it can be so difficult these days when image is being created for us and it's being suggested for us what we should look like and sound like and be like. But Lord Jesus, we just want to surrender ourselves to you right now and say, God, you breathe your identity into us. We want to represent you. We want to represent your kingdom. We want to represent the values of God. So Lord Jesus, forgive us for the times when we've um, tried to be something that we're quite simply not. And making ourselves almost unrecognizable from the, the, the authentic person that you created us to be with our sense of humor and our abilities and our talents and our certain likes and dislikes. Help us, Lord Jesus, to find that authenticity in you and to lose our fear of man, that we will always shine who you are so that you can live in us and live through us and that we can shine the love of God in a world that so desperately needs that. And we give you praise for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. If you'd love to give your life to God, it's a very simple decision. It's just saying, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Sorry for the way I've lived my life and I receive you as my Lord and Savior this day. And I'll start a journey today to discover what that all means. Very simple, no ceremony, just a heart decision. So thank you so much for being part of our, our service today, Eternity Church, and we'll catch you again soon. Have a fantastic week. May God bless you.